Okay, we're going to have a lesson on relating quantum number to orbital. Now you may have, in your textbook, you may have read about quantum numbers first and then went into a chapter about orbitals, but you never, but I'm sure like myself one time, you never clearly understood how the quantum number actually relates to the type of orbital. Well, this lesson is intended to help you better understand how the quantum numbers are related to the orbital. Now, first let's define what a quantum number is. A quantum number is basically four numbers used to describe the position of an electron. Well, the position of an electron can never, can never be certain, because according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you can never know the momentum and the exact position of the electron at the same time. And the smaller the smaller the object under, under consideration is, the more this law applies. Okay, now back to quantum numbers. So quantum numbers are basically a way of describing the orbital, the electron within the electron around an atom. So the first quantum number is known as the principal quantum number, also noted as n. Now the, the principal quantum number is actually the shell. So if you have a qu principal quantum number of one, it means the first shell. If you have a principal quantum number of two, it means the second shell. Now, in order, the principal quantum number allows us to find the angular momentum quantum number, which is denoted by L. Now, the angular momentum quantum number is actually the number of subshells that exist within that particular shell. In a principal quantum number of one, there is only one subshell, which is zero, because you determine n for each n, you, you determine L for the L value for each n, the angular momentum quantum value for each principal quantum number value, by s taking all the numbers between 0 and n minus 1. So if we have a principal quantum number of 1, we only have 0. So the only value of L for a, va for a principal quantum number of 1 is 0. Now, as you, as you probably have already uh, seen in the periodic table, the first principal the n equals 1 principal quantum number refers to the first period, which includes hydrogen and helium. Now, hydrogen and helium could only hold he hydrogen as one electron, while helium has two electrons. Thus, they have the s s sub orbit s subshell, which could only hold which could, which could hold a maximum of two electrons. And since their angular momentum quantum number is zero, the s subshell is actually equivalent to a value of L equals zero. So if the angular momentum value is zero, the subshell is S. However, let's go, let's take a principal quantum number of two, which is the second period. In the second period, we begin to see P orbitals. And this is actually explained by the fact that if you subtract, if you take a principal quantum number of two and you subtract it from one, then you have the range of values for the angular momentum quantum number of zero and zero and one, because zero and one comes before two, and n minus one equals one, so it's zero and one as the two possible angular momentum qu quantum number values. Now, as you can see on this, as you can see, the s, the of angular momentum value of zero is actually the s subshell, while the while an angular moment angular momentum quantum value of 1 is actually the p sub p sub p subshell so and and uh, angular momentum quantum number of 2 is the d subshell and an angular momentum quantum value of 3 is the f subshell and so on and so on now knowing the quant the angular momentum quantum number value we are we often the next step is to calculate the magnetic quantum number the magnetic quantum number, as you have probably seen already in your textbook, is actually negative L to positive L. So it includes all the values from the negative angular momentum quantum value to the positive quantum momentum, quantum momentum value. Now let's take now let's relate this to the number of orbitals within that particular subshell, the orient the orientations of that particular subshell. As you probably have already learned, uh, an S subshell has one 
possible orientation, while a piece top shell has three possible orientations. Well, this is actually related to the magnetic quantum number, because if you have a magnetic qu magnetic quantum number of one, uh, if you have a angular momentum quantum number of one, then there are three possible magnetic quantum number values: negative one, zero, and plus one. These are all the values from negative l to positive l. These are all the whole number values from negative l to positive l. So, if the angular momentum quantum number is 1, then the possible uh, magnetic quantum numbers are negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Thus, as you can see, we have three possible orientations. And you, as, as you probably have learned in class, the P subshell has, sub has three orientations. Oh, an orientation against uh, along the y-axis, an orientation against the x-axis, and an orientation against, against the z-axis. Similarly, if you have an angular momentum quantum value of 2, then you have four pos five possible orientations or magnetic quantum numbers. You have negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. So now, knowing that the magnetic quantum number is actually the number of positions the number of orientations the, or orbitals a subshell can have. Now we now the the fourth number the fourth quantum number which is the spin number is actually the orientation of the electron within the orbital. The an or each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. The s or this s subshell can hold a maximum of two electrons. The p subshell could hold a maximum of six electrons. Well, a p subshell could hold a maximum of six electrons. But because it has three orbitals, each orbital can have two electrons, and three orbitals times two equals six electrons. But within each orbital, each electron must have a different orientation. So the magnetic, the magnetic, the spin quantum number is actually the different the two types of directions that the electron within an orbital can have. Thus, you can see that the principal quantum number, denoted as n. The angular momentum quantum number denoted as L, and the magnetic quantum number denoted as the magnetic quantum number denoted as L sub m sub L, and the spin quantum number denoted as m sub s is describes an electron within an orbital, and you can see how the quantum numbers relate actually to the s s shells, subshells, or number of orbitals and the direction of the electron within the orbital.